your blue dotted line right here is y equals x. Assuming that with every processor added, you get 100% more perfect, more efficiency, um, we should see our, um, our machine's performance here. Obviously, the cluster does not do this. Why is that? Well, partially because of data overhead, um, passing data around and passing data back. Um, data passage network time is included into the run times here. Um, and also just because of the way hardware is structured. So the red line here you see is serial computation as the number of nodes increases, so does the, um, the floating point operations per second. Um, and you can see a decent increase, not a substantial increase, but it's, it's significant um, when you're doing more computations for sure. Uh, this is done with a data size of 1,000. No, I'm sorry. This is the uh, done with a data size of 7,200. Um, just to give you a little bit of a reference, a, with OpenMP and OpenMPI, with 20 nodes, there's about 11 gigaflops in this lab. With one CUDA card on one machine in this lab, there are 36 gigaflops for the performance. So when you're comparing the two, one video card on one computer in here versus this entire lab, um, video card is still three times faster. Um, so something to take into account for people who are into um, possibly this high performance computing stuff. Um, and How much is, okay, so the video card sounds great. What's price-wise compared to? Price-wise? The lab. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> GT 330 is about a hundred dollars. Oh, yeah, they're cheap. They're dirty. Okay. Four video cards. Wow. Uh, I don't know how much each computer in here costs, <laughs> but I'd be willing to say five or six hundred dollars. How much does each computer cost? Um, so, in terms of okay. price per performance, GPUs are incredible. Okay, I, I just was afraid we were going to say fifty thousand. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and, and that's why there's a revolution happening in the field right now with this, because you can now get cluster level performance out of a computer that's sitting on your desk, usually for under ten thousand dollars. If you do a calculation or a <coughs> you actually distribute it out to the CUDA cards, not just to share memory. Um, I don't have a plot of that, but it's working. Okay. So we're still running tests. That'd be. That's yeah. That's that's actually part of my future considerations. Mm -hmm. um, distributed hybridization using NVIDIA CUDA. Um, I want to write uh, my CUDA code again using generalized GPUs computations with um, a language called OpenCL, uh, which is, allows you to also run GPU computations on AMD video cards or ATI video cards. Um, I want to work in a little bit more internal network analysis. I want to know how much time is actually be being used uh, sending and receiving data versus the amount of time on CPU computing. Um, I'd also like to, uh, once this is finished, publish this, this code online um, and allow other people to use it, send me their results, um, and have some sort of a, a ranking or a system to where you know, other colleges or you know, people who are setting up their own systems who look and say, okay, this is kind of where I should be looking to start. Um, and also, looking at the data that we've gotten and knowing the algorithms that we're using to get it, uh, people will be able to better tune their code um, and better understand what's going on in their systems when they are trying to tune their code. Um, so new algorithms also should be put in uh, to actually solve linear systems with these matrices and uh, possibly some simulation and things like that. Are there any questions? <coughs> yeah, um, is there anything that using the, the CPU is still useful for or better than the graphics card? Or is basically, you know, going to all graphics card high performance computing just at the speed that we can convert all the high performance, you know, scientists? Yeah, it, it depends partially on your data size. It depends partially on your data structure. Um, it also depends partially on how your algorithm can be split up. If you can't some way get fine-grained parallelism, 
which is some essentially something that's embarrassingly parallel. You can split into thousands and thousands of threads. Um, then a video card is going to be slow because each core on that video card is barely over a gigahertz, if that. Uh, usually not even that. So the speed of the computation for something larger is going to be slow. So maybe if you're moving data around or you're referencing data that's not on the card a lot to do simple calculations, um, it would be better just keep it on the CPU because you've now got um, the time of passing the data through a PCI bus as well as a slow computation on the card for something that's not being slow. Tim, you make this sound very easy. Um, you going to be a little, a little more truth in advertising about what has to go to the code? Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> 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 what more? Blow your own horn. Make it sound good. Well, <laughs> but I want to get people interested in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it is. They're not going to want to do it. Um, <laughs> it, is, it is difficult. And the difficult part is partially writing the code, yes. Um, of course, with anything, once you get into the groove of it, it gets a lot easier. Uh, but the hardest thing for me was understanding my brain. Um, you know, we're so used to not really paying attention to what's going on in memory. We write, we write code with the operating system to take care of most of it. But the biggest part of high performance computing is memory management. And you have to know what's going on in memory. You can't have fast code without knowing what's going on. Um, and it has to be structured properly. So, understanding the memory models for shared memory, okay, we do that you know, in class, that's, that's understandable. If you start trying to distribute it, it picks it up enough. You try and share it after distributing it, it just it keeps compounding on itself. And by the time you get to CUDA, you don't know what's up and what's down anymore. Um, because it's a completely new approach to memory. So you've gotten all these ideas of how memory works, and now you're sharing memory across thousands of threads. Um, and then there are three different memory structures on the card itself. Correct. You've got you've got a dimension, you've got a block, and you've got a tile. All at the same time, you've got this three-dimensional space, almost of memory that you're trying to work in, um, and fit it all on a two-dimensional grid. So that's that's where it becomes difficult. When you have a bunch of uh, processors reading from a shared memory, you don't have a lot to worry about. But when you have them all writing to a piece of shared memory, you have to worry about, I'm writing on top of what you're writing. How are you dealing with that? Um, well, for one, when I split up my shared memory, all of my indices um, are private, meaning that each thread can only access one spot of memory at a time. So if there's another thread trying to access that spot in memory, uh, it's got to wait. And I mean, writes are fast, so it doesn't collide a whole lot. But the way it's structured, there's rarely collisions at all. Um, but OpenMP handles that for you. So if you tell them, OK, you know, for my for loop, I, J, and K, I want my I private, I want my J private, I want my K private, and I want my thread ID private. It's going to have all of its own instances. So every time it goes to write something, it's got it exclusively. Um, and so OpenMP can handle that. Another way to do it is to just declare that memory space atomic, but that gets slow. Bob, to your question on the CUDA card itself, the CUDA card has a shared memory, a large global memory on the card. But then each processor has its own memory that's very, very fast. So moving into the, the global space is slow. Moving between the shared space is very fast. So you have to be very proactive about where you want to put your information to speed up your calculations. That's true. I'm thinking like in your matrix multiplication, if you had multiple processors wanting to write to the answer table, mm -hmm. different ones might want to be writing to the same number there's some of these timing problems. Well, they're not they're not accumulating directly into the resulting matrix. They're reducing into their own space and copying their result into the matrix. So um, as as it accumulates, it's accumulating into its own memory space and then being copied over. Um, but yes, it is it is all handled by saying okay, if, if a thread is looking at a memory location, it's blocked from the other thread. 
yes, that's definitely something that slows down code, but the way it's scheduled, you don't notice it a whole lot. P thread, you call it a mutex. Remember that? Mutex. That's another way. To, yeah. And P threads was another option for doing shared code, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see. <laughs> Did you have any troubles running the open source libraries for? Um, OpenMP <coughs> is pretty easy. Um, it doesn't look like a lot on the front end. There's a lot going on behind the scenes that you need to understand to write it effectively. But getting OpenMP working is is relatively simple. Getting it working fast is, not, is another story. Uh, OpenMPI, uh, th th there's a lot more involved with it um, because you're passing data around, you're managing buffers as well as memory. Um, you kind of have to understand how the message passing interface works before you can write the code. If that makes sense, um, there's a lot of different ways to send your data, you know, blocking, non-blocking, things like that. Um, and so that took a little longer. And CUDA, I still don't have a complete grasp on CUDA. I can write CUDA, I can write fast CUDA, but I can't write optimal CUDA yet. That's, like I said, it's a completely different paradigm in computing. Um, so it, it takes a little bit of effort to understand. When will you know you've got optimal code? Um, when it stops getting faster. <laughs> optimal code is, is, is a relative term. Um, and I'm not necessarily going for optimal code here. I'm looking for standardized code because I'm benchmarking. Um, but optimal code is different for every machine. And it can't even be different for every data set. So saying you have optimal code, it's like saying you have the fastest car. And there's always something that can change that. Did you have a comparison against Atlas? Um, I forced you guys to do that in HPC classes. To, that gave you a good benchmark standard to go to. Did you yeah. do that here? Um, I, did, I did test against Bloss, but not Atlas. Um, I can run tests against Atlas. I know how to do that. But the idea here was to get my own set of kind of standard um, running. And so Bloss and um, Linpack are the two that I was I was looking to compare to more so than Atlas, because Atlas is too. Right. Well, that's the point. If you know, if you know Atlas is tuned for a machine, you say, oh, well, yours does the machine. That would be some measure of mm -hmm. is it optimal. So it's Atlas auto tuned for the machine. And that's, that's somewhere that this could definitely go. our hardware? Absolutely. Like what percentage do you think we're utilizing? Um, who? This lab right now. Who's we? As, as, yeah, who, who is we? Like myself, I can use it at 100%. No, I'm talking about the Dr. department. The department. On average. On What's average? Um, without including yourself. I don't know. Or me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You have <laughs> you have a supercar here, but you're driving pretty well. There's there's a lot of gear that's been on tabs. You said um, thirty five? No, thirty five. Yeah, thirty five. I was relative like two points. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of power here. There's a lot of technology in this lab, um, but no, it's not being used very much at all. And that's something that I'm trying to bring to the people here. Um, to the department to show that there is a lot of power here. There's a lot to learn here uh, that's not even being tapped. Um, and I think that that should be addressed. And, um, if, if, if you were to find a way, and maybe you know how to do this, and maybe you've done it, if every processor in the building doing something at the same time. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How hot the building should be. I can start that now. I was just saying, uh, we, we can we can do yeah. that right now. If you yeah. want to that, what's the uh, well, what's the energy consumption? Uh, um, energy consumption is actually a really good topic, and that's where we've gotten to with supercomputing now at, at Petascope Computing. They're actually um, calculating their efficiency by flops per tool instead of um, you know 
cost per dollar because